Namaste everyone. Very warm welcome to the session today. Sadhguru Shri Muji Baba Ki Jai. Yeah. So today, what are we doing? <laughs> are we pretending to have the bondage problem and then working towards our freedom? <laughs> are we going to see that there is nobody that is bound and yet play with bondage for a bit and then leave it? <laughs> yeah. What is the other seeker position? <laughs> Are we going to play with, I got it yesterday, today I lost it, but I've never really got it. None of these are true about you. We are only misunderstanding what is here. You feel like, or you believe, I am just a person sitting on the floor, sitting on the couch, sitting in the Zoom. But this starting point itself is not true. No person is sitting here. It's just an invented idea. Just notion. So then, if no person is there, then what to do with that which is there? Let's give that a name. That which is there. What do you want to call it? Do you want to call it God? Do you want to call it consciousness? You want to call it Sadhguru, being, I am. You choose. Everyone is with me so far? No person is there. With me so far in that? You find it? <laughs> you come and claim your thousand dollars. not. And yet I am. I am. It's a qualitative experience. I exist. Even to say I don't exist can happen only within your existence. So I am. Now what do you want to call this I am? Whatever we call it. Whatever we call it, doesn't really matter. Now, what is this I that is aiming now? Some of you have been with me in some of someone new. So this terminology might seem a bit strange. But a simpler way to ask this is who is even aware of this being? What is it that is aware of my being? Who is the I that now am? Hmm? 
Does that have a name? Did we go too fast? <laughs> Got there or no? Who is aware of your existence? It's clear for you now. It's there. It's there. Now, does that have a name? Does it have a shape, size, color, anything? Now you can not be that. You can not not be that. <laughs> you cannot leave that. We cannot become this which we have believing ourselves, we have been believing ourselves to be. Keep this awareness aside. Put it away. Don't go finding it, it's useless, forget it. Every day we come here and I say, find this awareness. <laughs> Today we say, okay, keep it aside. Don't be aware. You came unaware? <laughs> you able to do it? Did it? You came unaware? Not knowing whether aware or not. Yes, and what knows that you don't know? To your feet, there is no thought then. Yes, yes, yes. So thoughts been kept aside. Yes. You see? So there is a seeing of this, a knowingness of this. Even to say, at your feet, there is no thought. Who is aware of this? <laughs> yes, here we are one. Yes. And yet, am I having to whisper in your ear? Is Ananta having to whisper in your ear saying, ah, now thought doesn't matter here? No, it is your direct tasting that here thought doesn't matter. It is just that we have used the I for the wrong one, for the imagined one, for the pretend one for so long. That as you are coming to this eye, which is the unchanging, qualityless truth about yourself, it can seem like here, I went away. <laughs> because the false eye is not there. So when in some, some forms of spirituality, it is about killing the ego or demolishing the ego, the ego must be killed. <laughs> It is talking about this eye, kill the eye. Here we see that, has it ever really been? Where is it? This person, where is it? The one that cares about freedom, where is he? In this, <laughs> in this, in this, in this, where, where? In the pockets, <laughs> where is that one hiding? Produce the one that wants freedom. Found it? Not there. It is not there. It never has been. Never has been. Who's with me? Nobody? <laughs> Nobody? The sad reaction. <laughs> Who's with me so far? But it seems that awareness is in the head. Huh? The head. Awareness is in the head? Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny saying that because just yesterday 
<laughs> yesterday or day before i had this question is the back of your head in front of you or behind you many yeah. and this this is the point of this question because we have felt for so long that i am an entity contained within this head okay right? it's just because the visual stimuli is coming through these senses you see the knowing knowing comes to here on you know feel the knowing the mineral uh, essence but how do you how does it connect them how do you experience your arm so some faculty here on the air yeah uh, and then when you go to sleep then there's another body in that which you call the dream and that dream what is the faculty it still seems like it is the same faculty the dream body also seems to have this this centrality of this perspective all the sensations now tell me one thing this voice that you're hearing is it inside you or outside you outside so how do you experience it where is the experience it's coming the sound is coming sound is coming yeah and to the ears to the ears and going where <laughs> so that is just presumed yeah is it or we learned some concept in science or something like that what is your experience where is it experience is there anything which is experience outside of you okay forget where it actually is let's at least start with where is it actually experience these words where are the experience i'm aware of this you are aware of it mm-hmm. are you aware of anything which is outside of your awareness and you This is your first time you're here. Yes. So one useful contemplation I give to those who are visiting for the first time is find out whether that which we have presumed to be a boundary, how do you define your boundary through either the visual perspective of the body or through the sensations which we call the body. So find out if these sensations contain you or you are contained in these sensations. or the sensation that contained in you or you contain i'm asking the same thing over and over <laughs> really what is it are these sensations your container or you are the container for them from your experience if you keep all learned knowledge aside what is it that you experience then you will come to this openness to this fact that you are not in this world but the world is in you all the sages have said this mr gadatha maharaj said you are not an object in this world the world is an object in you but this as a concept is not worth while what is it that is our experience are you existing right now can you stop being for a moment what is aware of this being don't go with any inference any interpretation any learned knowledge go with what is now because if you are to find the self the self must be now independent of all things okay? the self which comes and goes cannot be the self so what is that which is aware of all things and itself remains unchanging anything like that <laughs> so i'm giving you all the main clues yeah the main problem that is you know, dealing with this troubles and thoughts yeah 
That is, you are right. <laughs> he says the main problem is to deal with these thoughts. Because many of the things through online and books I have read, intellectually I can understand. But when dealing with uh, daily life and relationships, and you know, the fears, anxiety, that may, that is like a block to you know, these explorations. Yes. That is, uh, and yet something must be there, a deeper longing must be there for the truths about yourself, which in spite of all these existential fears, still brings you to satsang in the middle of a work week, or at the end of a work week, during work hours. Is it? Yeah, main thing is suffering. suffering. I am not suffering, things are going nicely, I don't think of all these things. Or when I am too much in suffering also, my whole reactions all day. So that time also, you know, so just the right amount of suffering <laughs> <laughs> to bring you to satsang yeah. was yeah. there today. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, it, uh, I know another suffering will come. Before that, let me go into this so that I can handle it better. Can you find the one who is suffering? What did you, maybe just without taking any names, what did you suffer from? From my fears of life. Relationship, money, health of the body, and not finding freedom. These are the four main ones. Yes. Isn't it? Mostly, I say that the human condition, it seems very complicated. But yeah. if you look at the causes of our suffering, there are a few, a handful. Is it? So you could have suffered from work situation, which is money insecurity. You could have suffered from a relationship situation. You could have suffered because you feel that the body is not at a certain level that you want it to be. Or you could have suffered because you're not finding that freedom which you have been searching for. Isn't it? These are the main causes. Isn't it? So, which one did you suffer from? You can take relationship. relationship. Now, whose relationship is it? Reduce that one. My, <coughs> this person. Where is this person? <laughs> I'm not joking, there is thousand dollars cash prize here if you produce the person. <laughs> no, when I look look uh, for it, I don't find it. Then how does it get your belief? It is, it's like saying, I say, in that kitchen, there's a cat. Can you put some water in this bowl and go? You'll take the bowl, you'll go over there, you'll look for the cat. And you say, there's no cat, what are you asking me to do? And I'm saying, no, no, feed it. Just believe me, feed it. You see? So you say, and every time you look, you don't find it, isn't it? Or sometimes you do find it. You never find it. So you never find it. So how it gets your belief? Like I tell you 10 times, go, go, this time you'll find it. Go, this time. <laughs> After 10 times, you'll say, no, no, I'm not going to believe you anymore till you show me the cat. I'm not feeding it any water or milk. This one, we have fed for so long, but we have never found. So, are you open for some time to see whether we can withdraw its feed unless we find it? Fair enough, no? we fed it for so long and yet we are suffering. So let's try for some time that we will not feed it till we don't find it. I'll tell you how not to feed it all. But this much deal or no? Yeah. No. But who is that person who is telling that I am not feeding? That also I tell you. That also I tell you. Don't worry. So at least so far we have agreed that till I find this person, I will not nurture its belief system anymore. Agreed? So this to withdraw the feed, what you have to do is this pretend person as a lawyer okay, which presents itself in court and I'll tell you who the judge is in a minute presents itself and says this is what I want the lawyer says this is what I want this is what I want this is what I want okay. and he follows I want freedom I want a relationship I want more money I want security I want this I want that we've been following this voice who is representing this person but every time we check but who are you representing? You see? And yet, your question was good. 
So what is here that has been giving belief to this identity? This is consciousness. The being. In your dreamless sleep, is there any identity? Then what happens when you wake up? First identity, first thing is identity. Let's see. When you wake up, at least I can tell you from my experience that I exist. And then I exist. And then the senses started to function. And I noticed that this body is here. Along with the body, the world is here. And then all these remnants of the identity they come. I have to do this today. I have to do that today. This one, all, all the task list can start coming. And the identity comes up. But first, the sense of existence has to come. That which I asked you, can you stop being? Okay. That one arises, I am. It comes. Now, what is the identity? The identity is, I am something. Isn't it? Before that something, you are empty of it. In fact, right now you are empty of it. But if you think about it, then you will fill up that blank with something. But right now you are empty of it. Tell me if you are not. Yeah. You are empty of it. So this is unassociated consciousness empty of the something concept which it is believing itself to be. So in traditional terms, you will say that Atma is I am and I am something. And it plays as I am something is that which is called the Jeevatma. So this Jeevatma coming to Atma is the play of spirituality. Here I am saying it doesn't have to come because the something is just a notion. You just are right now. But if you fill in that blank with something, then you will play as if you are an individualized consciousness. Jiva. So now without that something, how will you suffer? Possible? Not possible. Very happy. You see this past. It's good. <laughs> Without putting, filling that blank with something, you cannot suffer. And naturally in this moment, are you something? Yes, I think. Yes, you think. Very good. But the problem is the thinking is too fast. And usually what I say That's is... That's the reason when you ask me in the morning when I wake up, <laughs> the identity, the gap you told me is too big. It's not big at all. Immediately the identity comes it back. A fraction of seconds. Maybe the existence part comes very first. But I can't even realize before that the identity has taken over. Actually, time comes after your existence, but it's okay. We don't have to go too far. We can say that there is no time between my existence and my identity. Actually, first your existence is, then time is. But that's okay. We'll come to that point. You see? But at least this much is seen. And this is our master key. You see? You are naturally just being. But when the notion is there, then when I am something come, suffering is bound to happen. That is the byproduct of this identification. See? Now, when I say, do you see this now? The usual reaction is, the mind will come with a but. See? So every day we, we joke about this but. So, okay, are you empty of identity now? Yes. But, <laughs> see, like that. Which is what? Another concept coming to the mind. See? Now, what, is, what has happened is that our habit has become to pick up, pick up this concept. Okay. The concept could even be, but it can't be so simple. I've been reading spirituality for so long. I've been practicing self-inquiry for so many years. I've been to so many ashrams. But what you're saying is that it's as natural as this in my existence right now. You didn't even do anything. You didn't even take me through the inquiry. You're just saying that without this something, this I am is complete. 
work, work. <laughs> I'm not making fun of it. I'm just, yeah, yeah. I'm just uh, saying that that is the usual human condition that this but will come. The mind will not give up so easily. So it presents a but, but you will explore these but and you will find that all of them again relate to that one that you don't find. And what is the make deal we made in the beginning? Till you find it, you will not eat it. So, tell me a but, which does not come for that one, which you cannot find. Tell me a but which is not personal. So, I said that you see yourself as just present, without any suffering, unless you think about it. Usually that thinking comes in the form of a but, especially when you're having a direct experience of your being right now, the mind will come with its but. Okay? Now these but are referring to you as what? As a person. No? And we made a deal that till we find this person, we are not going to believe any thoughts about it. That means we are not going to feed it. So tell me that which you're believing now, Anything? Anything, any thought regarding that? Yeah, which you're believing. The thoughts will keep coming. Yeah, yeah. Really, thoughts, don't expect them to stop. They can come, they can go. Thought is I'm very uncomfortable now. Yes. <laughs> 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 you know? Some of this uh, discomfort is very natural, but don't worry. All of them have gone through this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm practically a very shy person. That is one of the reasons for in this surrounding. We can all, nobody is judging you. And if somebody is judging you, that is satsang for them. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Sometimes what happens is that I like to have this conversation right up front. Because what will happen is even after one satsang, you could pick up some new spiritual concepts. And then I'll have to clean up even those concepts. So before you can pick up anything, then you like, catch you fresh. <laughs> you see, like, so, so this thought can also come that, uh, what must this Sangha be thinking of me? Yes. Because what is the me that is being referred to in that? The me that the thought is saying, is it person? Yeah. So what did we say? That whatever has to do with the person, we are not believing. Till we find it. Then we come to this uh, understanding of what the Zen master said when he said, let all thoughts come and go, just don't serve them tea. Yes, say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a popular but. But even this but you will get over. I try to meditate, but it doesn't happen at all. I am showing you that the fruit of meditation is before you have the intention to meditate. Or have any intention because what you are right now, your mind has called that something individual. But I'm showing you that what you are right now is not limited in any way. It is consciousness itself, it is being itself. I know it's a bit, uh, it can be a bit too much on the hot seat, too fast. <laughs> no, not that. I mean, I've been reading for years to get uh, you know, intellectually. A lot of things, but the point is, when it comes to the real life, the same personality takes over, the same reactions come. So, so I feel guilty, you know, in spite of knowing so many things, I behave like you know, a usual person. It's better to not know all these things. I think <laughs> I was just gonna say, that. yeah, because <laughs> the layman doesn't know all these things, yeah. so he reacts with at least you can say he doesn't have interest or anything, so he has not gone through all these things. Despite knowing and you knowingly do these things, like my family people will tell me, you know, they joke, you read all these things, you, you, you will tell me this, like that, you are not a person, there's no I. And the, the immediate reaction, the anger comes when you tell something. So it's somewhat odd, you know, like a split personality. <laughs> <laughs> you know that uh, there's one Ramdas who used to go to Neem Karoli Baba. He says, 
if you feel, ever feel that you are enlightened spend a weekend with your family <laughs> yes <laughs> so here actually this kind of satsang i am going to be honest with you and tell you that our resonance will be very strong if you are willing to give up on everything that you learn especially the spirituality but if you are attached to that then it seem like we'll have some like resistance struggles in the middle then we'll get along again then again some resistance then we is it so how open are you to dropping every concept that you know yeah i don't have any other religious spirituality kind yes. of I think lady is not your Advaita only. I am not. I am not. You can have devotional concept. No worry about that. I am speaking about all Advaita, including all the uh, all the non-dual teachings that you have learned. Are you attached to them? Not attached, sir. But it just coincides with so much. It's, it's, I don't think it is you so open. You know, moment you say something, I, I think the mind will work to find. You know, the mind can do what it wants. Yeah. so you know uh, this is satsang is what actually it is just consciousness speaking with consciousness consciousness reminding itself this is the leela that is why it is leela <laughs> consciousness reminding itself that it is not limited it is not what the mind is claiming to be that is just the lawyer of the person so now you are absolutely right i am very happy that at least you are diagnosing the problems correctly But if I say something, then some knowledge about oh this one had said this oh yes yes this I knew already actually why am I not presenting that which I know really like that is coming here everything everything especially the Advaita concepts <laughs> chop 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 is it what is what is that the root of Advaita that I am the self I am that I am just I. All these concepts have been chopped away. See? The only purpose, purpose of those concepts was to burn all the other concepts. But here, we are not going to replace the concept "I am a person" with the concept "I am awareness," because that is useless. In, in fact, better to carry the concept "I am person" than to carry the concept "I am awareness," because that. the suffering that can come with because of concept like i am awareness is much more than i am just a person but here you will have insight into this that you are awareness the proclamation might not come from your mouth but you will see it for yourself you will taste it for yourself and you are right that as the tasting is happening then the mind will try and use even these concepts to seem to get in the way So here, if this openness is there, that I have invested years in learning all of this concept, but actually I am ready for that open, that naked truth right now, empty of whatever I might have learned. Very straightforward. Most of the time, and Satsang goes in cleaning up the concept. As I was saying yesterday, that. For me, it is music to my ears when you say "I don't know." You feel very bad sometimes to say "I don't know," because you feel like, "Oh, I'm feeling that exam. I have studied I am that seven times, <laughs> and yet when I ask, when I say I don't know, it can feel like that because our condition has become like that. I don't know has become a bad, you know, phrase to use in school. You can't say "I don't know." Teacher will give you low marks. Is it? Here, the I don't know is very good. That means your identity is dissolved. You don't have a concept to fill in the blank with. You come into that not knowing, and from I don't know to this true I, it's very easy, super simple. But from I know <laughs> to this I is a journey that may last forever. So the I know. Is not true. At least, what we have claimed I know to be, which is a conceptual knowing. And uh, 
So if you have the best spiritual concepts, like you rightly said, and your family rightly said, <laughs> we say something to you, but where does that go? <laughs> is it that is it? That's why I said we are not just replacing concept. It has to become your living truth, your true insight. Okay? So conceptual knowing, put aside. Then I will ask you for something else. Perceptual knowing. Is it? Don't give too much value to that. That which you are perceiving also, don't, don't make it too important. Then emotional knowing. What you're feeling, blissful, or sad, very happy, they can, you're not resisting that. It can be, but you're looking if there is something beyond all of this. Conceptual knowing, perceptions, and emotions, any sensations. Is there something beyond all of this? So this is the knowingness with the capital Q that I'm interested in, that. If it is coming from a book, that knows. If it is coming from the memory of some experience, that knows. If it is coming because you're feeling a certain way, doesn't really mean too much. Who is the one that is witnessing all of this? What is the shape of that? No concept can help you with that. You can say, I know that I have no shape, but it's just a concept. It doesn't help. What is your insight on this? This is the question that we are asking. So, you're very welcome here. I look forward to continuing this journey, this inquiry. The sages have done us a great service because they have given us such potent clues and we are not to hold them in our intellect basket and say, I know this. I, have, I know that I am the unchanging witness. Really, just by conceptually knowing it, it is not. Use that as a clue. They have said that you are the unchanging. Can we find Can we find that which is unchanging? World changing, body changing, thoughts changing, emotion, sensations, pain, pleasure changing, waking state changing, dream state changing, sleep state also coming and going. What witnesses all of this? What is the unchanging? It is you. Which is not what you think you are. Where will I find it? Here. When will I find it? Now. <laughs> Because I am it. The one that is looking for it will be discarded. When the false is discarded, the truth is apparent. That is the beauty of this. You will not find it as an object. You will only discard the false. And you will see that I have always only been this. You will not become that. You are that. And these will not become concepts for you because in satsang what happens is that everything that is shared is necessarily contradictory. <laughs> and you cannot find but just yesterday you said. <laughs> so the necessary contradiction is there so that you are left with nothing conceptually. <laughs> I know that it can be frustrating because, you know, I want to know whether the sun rises from the east or not. 
Okay, I want the specific, clear direction. Tell me the truth. What is it? But I cannot tell you the truth. You will discard the photos. You see, you will not find the truth with something that I say. But you will use everything that I say to discard the false. And you will see that the truth has always been apparent. So if I'm only giving you one direction, then you will mistake the words which are coming from this mouth to be the truth or something. Don't get into that mistaken impression. These are just pointers. The pointer is not the destination. If you're too much to the left of something, the pointer will be go right. If you're too much to the right of something, the pointer will be go left. Which one is the truth? Go right or go left? Depends on what is the current condition. So if you're holding on too much to doership or inquiry, then I will say, stop everything. What are you now? Or you feel like, no, no, inquiry doesn't work for me. So then, can we inquire now? You must do the inquiry. <laughs> you never know what can arise in satsang. But the point is that we are coming to a positionless existence, motionless existence. There is no what am I to do? There is no where am I to go? It is only the dropping of the pretense and the recognition of the truth. Everywhere you go in this world, most places you go in this world, you will receive new concepts. Now, we don't want satsang to become also one of those places. It's better to say, I didn't understand anything, I don't know anything, <laughs> than to say, yes, yes, I got all the concepts that you were saying today and I've added them to my spiritual knowledge. Because notionless, conceptless, the truth is apparent to you now. Your mind might not give that certificate yet. But empty of the butt, it is clear what you are right now. Don't wait for a articulation of this. Even before you can say, I am free, you are free. Before you can say, I am bound, you are free. <laughs> it is just these notions are the masks that you are picking up. The I am something, right? that is the mask, that something is the mask. A thing you have to be. Even devotee you don't have to be. A devotee is not being a devotee. Empty of all notions is the best devotee. And as you start to look, you will find that all these doubts from the mind are not as powerful as we believe them to be. This is the thing, no? we feel like but that is so difficult. But you know, like you were saying, but easier said than done. Very natural for the mind to produce this doubt. But nothing is stronger than your being. No doubt is stronger than you. It's just a habit. So we're dropping that habit. At least this much itself is worth a lot when you see that unless I have a notion about myself, I cannot suffer. Even if you don't believe me yet, that notionless the truth is apparent about who you are. At least this much is apparent that you cannot suffer, isn't it? Because you have to believe yourself to be something before some concept can make you suffer. Clear? <laughs> Yeah, it was like a butt on your face. Any doubt?
Why pick up a notion? Okay, let's look at it from the other side. Why should I pick up a notion? Why should I pick up a concept about myself? Why should I am play as I am something? Any good reason? What gift will you get? In the playing I am something, are you getting something worthwhile? <laughs> I'm the only one who has a notion of this question. I'm looking at everyone's eyes and everyone is completely notionless. <laughs> what is he even asking? <laughs> Happy to see that, right? And Guruji says sometimes, he says, sometimes I look at all of you and I feel like you're just making me talk because you enjoy my voice or something <laughs> like that. And one day you're going to turn around and say, gotcha. <laughs> you actually believe that we, you know, we didn't get what you were saying. We got it like 10 years ago. <laughs> we have been making you talk because we like your voice. So <laughs> we like to hear you speak. Are you all gotcha in me or what? <laughs> no, but seriously, I know that from whatever experience um, is here from of this life, I know that there was a time where these notions seemed to have a lot of magnetic attraction, seemed to have a lot of power. And it is coming to satsang, being adopted by Guruji, that is help to empty out this magnetism from these notions. Sometimes it might be good to just take a few minutes and say, what are my top five notions? Just among yourself. You don't have to even expose. Expose them in your own life. What is it that still, when it comes from the mind, can still feel like, oh, this is, this is true. A little bit self-introspection, self-inquiry in this way is also helpful. How many feel still, very few hands might go up, that if you are empty of all notions, then your life will become a mess. Huh? Mess or bliss? Mess, mess. <laughs> <laughs> Even bliss is an ocean. <laughs> Be careful of the notion of bliss. <laughs> Nobody feels that. That is very good. Yeah. Maybe because it's already a mess. <laughs> yeah, you can't become a mess. <laughs> because then nothing would change. <laughs> life is always just like. You can say life is always perfect. But actually the word perfect has a wrong connotation at times. So better to say life is just life. Because <laughs> when you say perfect, then you're imagining some utopian sort of ideal. That is not it. Life is always just life. But to suffer life, you have to have a limited notion about yourself. Because I know that you are God. Because I know that I am God. And God cannot suffer. Because when I believe myself to be something limited, everything can become an opportunity to suffer.
But once you start in consciousness itself, it starts to enjoy its motionless existence. It's very rare for it to go back to being feverish about motion. So I'm also reassuring you that try it. You tried the way full of concepts for long. Now try this conceptless way. And if you have a report that you said this and since then my life has become a full mess, <laughs> then we can talk about it. It has happened with me. You rather you know. Uh, uh, Lucia, Australia, uh, not Australian Lucia, but American Lucia, Lucia, Australian is Lucia. Okay. So she said, <laughs> she said, I had this satsang with her where I told her that you're concerned that if uh, you hand over your life to God, he's just going to make a mess of it or a hash of it. You say, yes, yes, Father, that is fine concerned, I'm surrendering it or something. This is what I remember. <laughs> then I'm surrendering it. Next day she came to satsang and she had this pretend anger with me. <laughs> Anantaji, your father, whatever. I'm very angry with you today. Um, I said, what happened? <laughs> she said, you said to hand it over to God. And I've been a practice, practicing th psychotherapist for 20 years. Never missed an appointment. And I handed it over to God. And for the first time in 20 years, I missed an appointment. <laughs> I gave it over to God and he messed it up. <laughs> so this, the giving it over to God cannot be done with an expectation of what a mess up is or not. This is not a cop out. It's not <laughs> an excuse. But we still, if we still have an idea of what my life should be, then that is not surrender at all. So it is that expectation which has to be surrendered. You know, it's not a cheat code to getting your desires. I'm just going to hand over to Guruji and then Guruji will make sure I have a million dollars in my bank account. <laughs> he'll make sure I have the perfect partner. <laughs> All my uh, meetings go on time. <laughs> it's not that. But it helps a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it can seem to help. But when the expectations are not met, <laughs> then the resentment can also come. <laughs> what are you doing? Do you know how to do this? Are you new at this job? <laughs> yes. so, so the idea that I am the doer and the idea that I am the experiencer are both surrendered. Tom karta, tom bhokta means you are the doer and you are the experiencer. And this you will be seen to be I only ultimately, it's fine. But from in the spirit of surrender, it means you are the doer and you are the experiencer. Who am I? All of this is your game, your play. You are playing with yourself. To surrender is to surrender this me, this identity. Then you start to see that there never was this me anyway. The surrenderer was just a play by consciousness itself. Most of human existence has been feeding this cat that you cannot find. At least that much you have to admit. <laughs> you have not found this person and you have been feeding it. Who has been doing it? Consciousness. Why? My favorite theory is entertainment. Even that is not true. Because the mind of the, the reasoning <laughs> behind consciousness, there is no such thing. You cannot say why. This consciousness. Why consciousness wants to do this? Consciousness. 
which means that everything is basically the will of consciousness. So you can say it is the leela. I can joke and say it is entertainment. Consciousness was bored by being everything. So then it wanted to play as if it is Ananta and Radha and Drishti and Prakash and Tejas, all of us. <laughs> and the space between us. Sometimes, you know, this misconception can be that the being is only like these bodies. So I have the being here and the being there. And I usually say, but why did you leave out the space? <laughs> that is also consciousness. It is one consciousness. Helen says, Father, can you talk about disidentification from suffering? My aunt died seven hours ago. In this moment, I am having trouble with identification. Yes. So when an event has happened, then we must not have an expectation that grief should not come now because I am becoming free. Grief is also part of the natural functioning of this existence. So allow room for this grief to come. But see if there is a one who is grieving. Okay. So in the grief, grief can be felt. But the griever is not there. The sufferer is not there. And then what you will discover in this is that in your being, there's so much space that all this grief can come but doesn't make a scratch on being. It only seems to dent the identity which was never real anyway. Only your notions about yourself can be attacked. So grief is another aspect of consciousness which can be allowed to come and go. All the flavors in this entire spectrum of sensations, consciousness is playing this way to taste all of this. Sometimes joy, sometimes grief. So don't confuse the arising of a sensation or an emotion to be an identification. When you, when you pick up the idea that I am suffering, that is identification. Before that, it is all just moving sensations on the screen of consciousness. When I was very young, you that song? <laughs> when I was young, my father said, Son, I have something to say. Yes, <laughs> No. A bachelor born yeah. until my dad. Okay, let's come to the song. <laughs> That's good question. And I said, when I was very young, I feared the void I felt to be inside of me. Or to be me. Therefore and thereafter. 
started to collect dispositions and characters to build a meaning. I felt as a kid, I needed a character to function in the world. It is now a turning. It is now a turning around of that path. Exactly. Exactly. That's why. You said. Oh, I need something. Oh, oh yeah. Jesus, he said, only the children will enter the kingdom of heaven. Children doesn't mean that this enlightenment is only a possibility for those who are less than seven. It means that those who are innocent, the same innocence, empty of concepts, empty of notions. So Anna is absolutely right. She's saying, actually, satsang is this turning around. So it picked up, picked up conditioning, because the truth was very apparent. In fact. Many of us, if we were to report about our, our childhood, we will say, Father, yes, it was so apparent to me when I was a child. So now it is just this, we picked up, picked up so many notions, conditions, and now they are being dropped. And yet there is something in this play of having been deluded and then freeing consciousness, having been deluded and then freeing itself from the delusion, seems to cause some delight for consciousness. <laughs> so, so it is that, returning to the innocence. The fear of it, yes. yes. This is what I've been talking about for the last few days also, that whether we call it the fear of death or we call it the fear of the unknown. I am here to tell you that if this fear is there, I am happy to hold your hand and tell you that this fear was experienced here. This wobbliness was experienced in full intensity here. But my master was holding my hand. So I am holding your hand. If you are here physically, I am physically holding your hand. If you are not at a physical proximity, I am holding you here in my heart. And I am telling you that the fear is unfounded. Even if it feels like you are dying. And the minute you are, the moment you are empty of the next notion, it can feel like this for many of us. That death is coming. But this is only the death of the pretend one. Don't let any interpretation of this fear make you believe another concept about yourself. In fact, one of the primary reasons why having a living master is so beneficial is that he can take you through this fear, reassuring you that nothing will happen to you. This fear is very primal. And yet, for those of you who are not experiencing it, please don't make it another benchmark. <laughs> oh, I haven't yet gone through that fear, so I must not have got it yet, or something like that. That's why I said usually it is a, it is a common thing to experience this fear. It can feel like the fear of death. Maharaj at one time said that till you have gone through your death, you will not find freedom. This is what he meant. I'm here for that, my dear. I'm here to tell you that no fear, no matter how big it is, is not stronger than your being. It is not stronger than the Sadhguru's presence. Let's see this fear through together. Uh, 
all is taken care of. I know that sometimes I can say these things very simply and say, just don't pick up a notion. Be notionless. But I know that in the face of this notionless, many times strong fear can come. Fear of the unknown, not knowing what is going to happen. You can feel like I'm dying. This is the end of me. It is not. <laughs> you are discovering that you are endless. You are deathless. I'm here to tell you that I have seen this through. And so can you. And so are you. As I very simply, I say, don't fear the fear. Let as much fear come. Sometimes very like, very simple, almost truisms are helpful with this. <laughs> like, tell the fear how great Guruji is. And there are various responses to this fear. Sometimes we might say, no, no, I'm done with this. It's not for me. I'm not ready yet. I'm going to come back later. Or I don't want this. This is too much. Okay? Or some latch on to some spiritual concept. Okay? And say, yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. Actually, in the moment of some insight, some fear is coming. And you almost recoil because of that fear. And you say, ah, yes, yes, that was it. I got it. That was it. So if you're referring to some experience over and over again from the past, then know that this one is just like a recoil. And because if you have to refer it from the past, what you're actually saying is that you are not that now. There are some who get... Uh, caught in this whole thing that keep talking about some experience they had, like an awakening experience or something. There's no big deal in that. You are that now. So this fear can come with various responses. By the way, like I was saying the other day, it is not always fear. Sometimes it can seem like a joyous excitement also. Huh. Like I was saying the I'm not this body. See it. Oh, wow. It's so nice. Yeah. Nothing contains me. I'm beyond all things. <laughs> As I see it, I'm feeling that excitement, right? the joy of not being contained. Sometimes the joy can come. Many times the fear can come. But whatever is coming, know that it will pass. <laughs> don't get too scared or don't get too attached with any of the byproducts. Some get very attached to the bliss also of an experience. And say, that was when I was free. No, no, no. That was the time when bliss was coming. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the reality of you. This uh, reversal, so the surrendering, the fire ceremony, the leaving it at the feet of the master, all of this is for this. Whatever your favorite notions are, throw them away. Everything that has happened, just leave it here. And everything that is going to happen, 
just leave it here. Nothing is your problem now. I'm not reading out all the comments because my throat is a bit parched. <laughs> Can we have a version today? I have nothing to say about that. We can bounce some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know this one. I seem to have forgotten Which one? This is what she's saying. Shiva, 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 Shiva. Shiva, 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 Shambhu. Shambhu. Jehu. Shiva, 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 Shambhu. Shambhu Jeho Har 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 Shambhu Shambhu Jeho Har 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 Shambhu Shambhu Jeho Maha Devaya Maha Devaya Maha Devaya Maha Devaya Maha Devaya Maha Deva Maha Deva Maha Deva Shiva 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 Shambhu Shambhu Jeho Har 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 Hare Shambhu, Shambhu, Jeho, Maha Devaya, Maha Devaya, Maha Devaya, Maha Deva Maha Deva Maha 
देवा महादेवा शिव 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 शंभु शंभु जय हो हर 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 शंभु शंभु जय हो जय जय भगवन श्री मुजी जी जय भगवन शिवाया जय भगवन जी जी जय भगवन शिवाय जय भगवन ओम नमो शिवाय गुरुदेव नमो ओम नमो शिवाय गुरुदेव नामो जय भगवन शिवाय जय भगवन श्री मुजी जी जय भगवन शिवाय जय भगवन ओम नमो शिवाय गुरुदेव नमो ओम नमो शिवाय गुरुदेव नमो जय भगवान शिवाय जय ओम नमो भगवते श्री रमनया ओम नमो भगवते श्री रमनया ओम नमो भगवते श्री रमनया ओम नमो भगवते श्रीरमनाया ओम नमो भगवते श्रीरमनया ओम नमो भगवते श्रीरमनया ओम नमो भगवते श्रीरमनया ओम नमो भगवते श्रीरमनया अरुणाचला अरुणाच 
ಅರುಣಾಚಲ 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 ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ಶ್ರೀರಮಣಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ಶ್ರೀರಮಣಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ಶ್ರೀರಮಣಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ಶ್ರೀರಮಣಯ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ 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 ಭಗವತಿ ಶ್ರೀರಮಣಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತಿ ಶ್ರೀರಮಣಯ ಶಂಭೋ ಶಂಭೋ ಶಿವ ಶಂಭೋ ಮಹಾದೇವ ಶಿವ ಶಂಭೋ ಶಂಭೋ ಶಿವ ಶಂಭೋ ಮಹಾದೇವ ಹರ 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 ಮಹಾದೇವ ಶಿವ ಶಂಭೋ ಮಹಾದೇವ ಶಿವ ಶಂಭೋ ಶಿವ ಶಂಭೋ ಶಿವ ಶಂಭೋ 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 ಮಹಾದೇವ 
have no lung capacity left. <laughs> Yoga. <laughs> Krishna is coming. Krishna is coming? Okay, let's go. <laughs> Krishna won't go, you know. <laughs> Krishna Vande Parimanandam Vande Ham Krishna Vande Parimanandam Krishna Vande Parimanandam Vande Ham Krishna Vande Parimanandam Krishna Vande Parimanandam Vande Ham Krishna Vande Parimanandam Vande Krishna Vande Parimanandam Vande Ham Krishna Vande Parimanandam Dara Krishna Tulsi Dara Murali Dara Krishna Tulsi Dara Manamohana Anandana Manamohana Anandana Krishna Vande Parimana Krishna-mandi-parvanandam-mandi-ham Manamani Yamuna Tir Mihari Hari Yamuna Tir Mihari Hari Yamuna Tir Mihari Hari Yamuna Tir Mihari Hari Yamuna Tir Mihari Yamuna Tir Vihari Krishna Vande Parimanandam Vande Ham Krishna Vande Parimanandam Vande Krishna Vande Parimanandam Vande Ham Krishna Vande Parimanandam Govindanand Gopala Krishna Govinda, 
Murali Krishna Gopala Nanda Nanda Ananda Nanda Nanda Govinda Nanda Nanda Gopala Gopala Nanda Nanda Ananda Nanda Nanda Govinda Nanda Nanda Gopala Gopala Nanda Nanda Ananda Nanda Nanda Govinda Nanda Nanda Gopala Gopala Nanda Nanda Ananda Nanda Nanda Govinda Nanda Nanda Gopala Gopala Nanda Nanda Ananda Nanda Nanda Govinda Nanda Nanda Gopala Gopala ಆನಂದ <laughs> something in your page you can see which one
So many times I repeated the same word and twice. It's always a clever version. So every time you don't remember that you sang it. It's a simple one where everyone can join. Radhe Govinda, Radhe Govinda. Govinda, Govinda, Radhe Govinda, Radhe Govinda, Radhe Govinda, 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 Radhe Govinda, Keshava Krishna, Madhava Krishna, Keshava Krishna, Madhava Krishna, Govinda, Govinda, Radhe Govinda, 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 Radhe Govinda, Radhe Govinda, Radhe Govinda, 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 Radhe Govinda. Keshava Krishna, Madhava Krishna, Keshava Krishna, Madhava Krishna, Govinda Govinda, Radhe Govinda, Govinda, Radhe
थैंक यू ऑल सो मच फॉर बीइंग इन सत्संग टुडे सतगुरु श्री मुजि बाबा की जय सतगुरु श्री आनंद बाबा की जय